the recording too. Okay, so yesterday we saw installation of JDK, how to download Eclipse and then use it. Then what is the data type visa and then what is a variable visa? Okay, so these are the things actually what we have seen till yesterday. So variables, we have seen the basics and then today we will go in depth on memory allocation, all those things. Okay, so now can anyone tell me actually what, how to open Eclipse and then create a project package, all those stuffs. Uh, Shweta, you are not able to hear me. Um, can you check your speakers, Shweta? Uh, yeah, Shweta, I, we can hear you. Just check your speakers alone once. Oh. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm there you now. Thank you. Oh cool. Okay, cool, Shweta. Uh, so now, um, hey, hi, Rakesh. Hey, uh, hey, Rakesh. Uh, now, can you help me? I just want you to open an Eclipse, create a workspace project and a package. Can you help me on that? So, uh, I think you are on the Eclipse folder. Just open the Eclipse. Uh... Yes, super. Click on run. Click on run. So it takes a little bit, two minutes of time. Okay, now I uh, on the workspace. I want to create a new workspace. I want to change the location. Yeah, so click on browse and then uh, create. Super. So I'll just create my fourth workspace simply. Let me. Sorry. I just create a new folder here. My fourth workspace. Select it. Select the folder. Yes. And launch. Launch it. So now the eclipse is opening. So usually it takes actually a minute or two to open the eclipse at the beginning. I'm sorry, what is that? Can you repeat that? Uh, usually to open the eclipse, the screen, it will take a minute or two usually. Okay. Okay. All right, yeah. So you guys uh, don't think that actually world there is a, it got struck or something. Usually it'll take one or two minutes. That's what I want to say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, good. Uh, yeah. Right. Thanks, Rakesh. Now so can you. Now we need to create a workspace. So file, new workspace. Uh, no. Uh, so. Sorry, I mean, need to create a. Correct. So we have created workspace now. The next thing is project. And then a package and then class. Yeah, correct. A Java or a class file. Super. Now, can you help me creating the project? Uh, yeah. File new yes. project. Sorry, new project. Project, and then select Java project in that. Yes. Otherwise, if you don't have here, uh, click on Java folder, and then uh, yes, Java project. Java project. Awesome. That's it. Click next. So here, I'll give the project name as of now. I'll give first project something then uh, and then select the java runtime I mean environment jre yes correct yes. that's it now click on and click finish. On finish yes finish so once we create the java project so uh, okay let it create so now it will change the view so it should be from Java W to Java. The view will get changed. Mm -hmm. So now, so now you'll see. Java. Yes. So these unwanted windows as of now, I'll close it because I'm not going to use it. So now I'll right click on the project. 
now i'll go to the properties i'll go to the original folder location so here we'll have a source and then a bin folder so right. yeah. what is the difference between these two folders so the source will have the dot java files and bin the class files correct so what is the usage of java files and what is the usage of class files so uh, so so java files is for our use whatever we uh, you know we do the programming like you know, we will be able to see the logic behind that class files are for external usage like you know, if we have to share the logic with someone else then if, i mean if you do not want to see the code then we have to share share the class files sure so it's like actually what java files are used for editing the files so for example the where whatever files we create over here those informations i can edit over there also dot class files are used only for execution purpose alone mm -hmm. okay good so now uh here we have a gre system library what is this gre system library consist of yeah so these consist of uh, uh, uh or predetermined uh, like my help files like I mean, our, our program files, like, you know, like let's say, for example, CISO, system dot dot print like, you know, they will already be uh, coded and created as a jar file. Correct. So, internally, already, to undo. yes. Internally, already the Java, Java developers have written those files over there. So, those files will be used for me to for execution over there. So, for example, system dot out dot print and if I give, so for that already there are 25 to 30 lines have been written for it so we are going to utilize those things okay okay so now now we have created the project next what i need to do you need to create a package yes right click on the source folder new uh, package yes package yeah, so here I think it needs to start with the lower case. That's a best practice, good practice. Super. So I'll just give a package name as, for example, uh, samples. In case if I give a capital letter, is it possible to create? Yeah, it is possible to create, just a warning will be coming. Up. Correct. Can I give a space over here? No, only underscores are allowed. Correct. So if we have two words, sample project, if I have, so what are the different ways one i can give based on actually what the case the upper case and lower case other ways we can just give a underscore. underscore only underscore is allowed here that's it super yes after the project we need to create a java class right click new new uh, class class so here i will create for example the variable usage simply Okay, so then what are and the difference between public and package? As of now, a very so, basic thing you're saying. Yeah, so, um, so public, I'm not able to recollect that. Okay, no. so the thing is, as of now, we are not seeing any details about the modifiers, but the only thing is, when I have a public keyword, the class name will come as class, sorry, public class variable usage. If I have a package, it's like comes as the public keyword will not come, just actually yeah, a class just variable a class usage. Yeah, there's a class name, yes. Okay. So now, yeah. what is the usage of this checkbox? Yeah. So only if it has the main function, you'll be able to execute, or I mean, you'll be able to call that function and execute. Super, correct. In case I forgot to click on the main function, now I'll click on finish. Now, is there any shortcut for me to get the, uh, the uh, my main function? So within the uh, within the braces, uh, yeah. and then control space enter. And then it uh, will, what I need to type here? Main. M A I N. Super. So control space enter. Control space enter. So now main method will come. Click on enter. That's it. So now. Can you just help me to print in a low world statement? Yeah, so CISO. CISO. Again, control space enter and uh, within, uh, like within quotes. Yes. Hello world. Hello world. Yes. 
Awesome. So to run the program. Uh, right click and run as Java program. Yes, run as Java application. So in case if I don't have this main function here, when I right click, I will not be getting the Java application over there. Okay, right? that's it. Great, a hey, good man, awesome. Thanks, Rakesh. So now next, uh, hey, hi, Shweta. Hi. Hey, hi, Shweta. So now can you help me to create uh, a local variable and then actually what? A global variable. Yeah, sure, yeah. Since the local variable needs to be created within the class. Super. Global variable. Yes, so and for so example, can you tell me in which line number I want to create a local variable? Uh, line number four. four, right? A local variable. Oh, local. Local variable means what? Any variable which has been declared uh, inside the function. Inside the function. So this is a function. So here, yeah, line number six. So I want an integer variable. The variable name is a with a value called ten. So I want an integer variable with a variable name called 10. Um, int a equals 10. Equal to 10. Super. Now I want to print the value. Can you tell me what I need to do? CISO. CISO. Yeah, control space and enter. Super. Now. And Local, we can just give the variable name itself, right? So within braces A. Yes, superb. Can I give it in double quotes? No, it is considered as a string. Yes. So it has to be it's just print. A with. Correct. If I print it, it comes as the name of whatever we entered because anything that comes under double quotes will be treated as a string only. So now if I right click, run as Java application, 10 will be printed. Got it? A good, super. Now, can you tell me? I want, okay, just a second. I'll increase the font to run, guys. Give me a minute. So, now I want actually what? A global variable. So, where we need to have a global variable? Global variable, I think it's line four. Super. So, what are the different types of global variable we have? Uh, static and non-static. Yes. So I will have so integer x is equal to I will have 20 integer y is equal to 30. So now I want you to make the x variable as static, the y variable as non-static. Can you tell me what I need to do? What changes? Sure. At the beginning of int, we, we uh, add the keyword static. Yes. I will should have a static keyword here. That's it. Here, do I need to do any changes here? No, I can stay as is. Sure, correct. Because if we declare a variable outside a function, by def if we don't have any keyword, by default, it will be taken as a non-static variable. That's it. Clear, right? Okay, super. So now I need to print the value of x and then y. So mm -hmm. what I need to do? So, CISO. Ah, so, CISO. The best practice for to utilize the static the members. Class. Awesome. Yeah, by class name, variable usage. Dot. Dot x. x. Super. Is there any other way can I utilize the static members? Um, by the class name, object name, or the variable name itself. Super. So by the class name we saw, otherwise directly by the variable name, then that is yeah. Just another way anything is by the object name. 
Super, correct. Can you help me on creating an object? Um, sure. Uh, so first we give new variable, uh, whatever Super. variable using. Yes. And then this on the right command. hand side, uh, uh -huh. yeah, variable type, or uh, no, variable usage object equals. Super. So this line will help me to create the object. Now I need to give a name for the object. So I'll just give obj is equal to. Super. Now for data types, sorry, for uh, variables, data types are the reference. So same thing for the class, uh, for the objects, who is the reference? Class name. Correct. So yeah, okay. yeah, I need you, as you said, variable usage, obj equal to new variable usage. Super. So now what are the members will be loaded into this object? Um, just those non-static members. So uh, actually objects will load all the global members. Might be static or might be non-static also. So here we have static int x, integer y, then my main function. Okay, right? Okay. All the three will get loaded for me. So now, can you access x, can you print x variable, then finally the y variable. So print I'll x. Try. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Just give it a try. So now okay. we have accessed with the help of a class name, then we have access directly. Now we need to access them with the help of the object name. Object name. Uh, I don't think I can do that. I don't know. So here we have created the object, right? So this part helps me to create the memory object. Then this is the object name. Then variable usage is my reference over there. So that in this class, load all the global members might be static or non-static might be a variable or function gets loaded here so what's the object name here obj correct obj yeah. so ciso what's my object name obj obj dot now can you see i can access yeah. it and then y so now okay. i'll print x then ciso huh obj dot y so non-static members there is only one option i can access their very access them only with the help of the object so static members alone can be accessed with class name directly by the variable name and also directly by the object name also so now i have integer x is equal to 50 a local variable Okay, so now I want to print the value 50 and then also I want to print the value 20. Now, can you tell me what I need to do? Want to print uh, uh, the value. Hey, good. Uh, hey, thanks, Shweta. Thank you. Good. I'll just ask uh, Rakesh. A hey, good one. Good try. Hey, hi, Rakesh. Hey, hi. Hey, Rakesh. Can you tell me now I have actually what a local variable called x equal to 50 in this place. So now I want you to print the value 50 and then I also want you to print the value 20. Can you tell me what I need to do? So, uh, CISO. CISO. Uh, yeah, control space center. Yes. Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, then we can just call the variable X directly. Yes, super. This will print me 50. 50. So now also I'll just try to print it so far what we have done. So right click, run as dev application. So first hello world, then after that the a variable value here is 10. Then variable usage dot text. Whenever we refer with directly, when we refer with the help of a class name, search directly goes to the static and then gets me the x value that is 20. Now we don't have any local variables here with x. So that's why we printed actually what x that is 20. Then created the object again with the help of the object name we are printing x so 20. Then obj dot y y value is 30. Then we have created a local variable called ex. Then we now we print it actually what x. So now this time it's actually what printing the local variable value. 
now i want to print the value 20 now yeah, can you so for that yeah so for that either you need to reuse line number 10 or uh, line number 13 super one i can refer with the help of the class name okay one i can refer them with the help of a class name other option oh, no. is refer them with the help of the object object name that's it right click run as java application see now last two things 2020 we got clear right okay any any questions for anyone on this a hey, good rakesh thank you any questions so far for anyone everyone is clear right okay super now i will execute this program with help of the memory allocation concept we'll see so now we have seen actually what how the execution actually what goes here but i told you actually what memory concept also is important over here for understanding a program so we'll see actually what how that works so now let me execute this so always when we execute a program a first a memory allocation will be done okay so that's what first will happen then the memory name will be my class name with some hexadecimal number will be my class name with some hexadecimal number here okay so then what is the first memory which will be created into the memory location means that is my static pool okay that's what the first memory which will be created here okay so then it will load all the static members into the memory location so this is called as static pool then it loads all the static members so what are the static members here we have one is static int x is equal to 20 then after that i also have my main function so both the things so public static void main string arguments so these both will get loaded then after that next what will happen the main function we told it's a default get started right so how means okay after the main function is loaded the first memory which will be executed is a main function so local memory for main will be created because always whenever we execute any statement there is a memory has been allocated at the back end here so the main function which comes from the static pool that when that executes a memory will be created for it then integer a is equal to 10 now what will happen a local memory will be created and to the main function here clear so still now everyone is clear any questions so far so simple whenever i start i'll just do a small recap whenever i start to execute a program the first memory which will be created will be my entire memory in that the memory name will be my class name with some hexadecimal number then the first memory which will be created is my static pool then all my static members will get loaded into it okay so static members always it will have a single copy alone okay so what is that single copy we'll see later okay so then my main function starts to execute when my main function starts to execute a local memory for the main will be created for it okay then integer a is equal to 10 a local variable is created inside the main function that's what we have seen still now clear any questions uh, everyone is clear guys can everyone ping me in the chat windows yes if you have understood it so far can everyone ping Rakesh, Vita, Tejash, everyone understood? It's clear, right? For everyone? Cool. So now, system.out.println and hello world. So now, hello world gets printed for me here. Okay. So next, system.out.println and A. Whenever we refer only by the variable name. So what will happen? The search will go to the main function. Then here 10 will be printed for me here. 
so 10 will get printed for me here clear then next system dot outdoor printer and variable usage dot ex okay so whenever we refer with help of actually what a class name the search directly goes to the static pool then it prints the x value from there okay whenever we refer by the variable name search goes to the local memory then after that actually what if we don't have that memory then when it goes to the static pool whenever we refer it by the actually what uh, class name search directly goes to the static pool then it prints the value if it is there okay now next is system dot printer and x now referring by the variable name alone now search goes to the main function do i have any x variable here no so now from here search goes to the static pool then do we have x variable here yes the value is what 20 so 20 gets printed for me here clear guys clear on this why actually what 20 is being printed and then how the search goes from main to static pool. Everyone is clear on that, right? Okay, next. Variable usage obj is equal to new variable usage. So what does new variable usage will do? So for me, it creates an object for me here. Okay, the object name will be actually what? obj. obj is my object name. Then variable usage, that's my class name here clear so variable usage is my reference over there that's my class name so now what will happen right now for me so it loads all the global members from the variable usage class correct it loads all the members from the variable usage class so here all the static members will take the current value from the static pool so static int x is equal to 20 then my main function these two are the static members which gets loaded from the static pool because static members will have a single copy. So right now what we have in the static pool current value will be taken. Then all my non-static members. Do we have any non-static member? Yes, that is integer y is equal to 30. That's what. Clear? Then next. So apart from that, do we have any main function? No, that's it. Clear? Next. So system dot out dot print and obj dot ex. So now referring with help of the object name goes to the obj. Do we have x variable here? Yes, the value of x variable is now 20. 20 gets printed. Obj dot y comes to the obj. Do we have y variable? Yes, the value is 30. Okay, then integer x is equal to 50. So now what will happen? Goes to the main function. Here do we have any x variable here? So it gets printed, sorry, it gets created newly. Okay, so integer x is equal to 50. Anything comes with actually what integer x over there means creation of a variable, then initializing of a variable. Then system dot out dot printer and x. So now comes here. Do we have x variable now? Yes, we have in the main function. The value will be 50. Because always when we search with the help of a variable name, search will go directly to the main function and then prints the value of it. Okay, that is 50. Next, system dot out dot printer and variable usage dot x so now referring with help of my class name so variable usage dot x so now what will happen the search will go to the static pool what is my x variable value 20 so that 20 will be printed so static members if i want to utilize one i need to mem uh, refer them with help of my class name otherwise with help of the object name obj dot x the value is 20 That's it. Yeah. Then we come out of the main function. Once we come out of the main function, 
the memory which is allocated for the main function will be deleted. Then once we come out with the entire memory, the entire memory will get deleted for me here. By whom? By the garbage collector. Understood? Clear for everyone, guys? Can everyone ping me in the chat window? Yes, if you have understood this concept. So that is how to actually what utilize actually what? The local and then static and then non-static members. Everyone clear, right? Okay, good. Awesome, guys. So now next actually what? We will see one more final program. So actually before that we'll have a break. Okay, so that actually what? A uh, little bit a big program. So we'll see how to utilize it. Okay, so let me take the program and keep and then we'll go for a break. And then after that, we will execute the same thing with the help of the executions. We'll try to execute these two members. I'll change the project name here. So it's I copied from some other different package, those things. So I need to change the package name here. So my package name is sample project. So package sample project. When I give that will be clear. Same thing here also. Different package name. I need to give this. Okay, so now it's 7:55. 8 o'clock, we will again connect, and then after that, we will execute this program through help of a memory allocation. Clear? Okay, so we'll again connect by 8, 8 o'clock now. Okay, F4, uh, okay, 8, 5 we will connect. So a 10 minutes break you can have. Okay, 8, 5 we will connect. Okay, thank you.
Hello. Hey, hi, guys. We'll start the session. Okay. So, can everyone hear me now? Can you guys hear me? Super. Good. Okay. So, now let me execute this program. So, come here. Now let me execute this program. So we'll see actually what if I execute this, how actually what the memory will be utilized. Okay. So when I execute this program, as we shall we know, the first memory which will be created will be my class name with some hexadecimal number, correct? Yeah, so class name with some hexadecimal number will be created. Sorry. Okay, then can you guys tell me over there? Hey, hi Rakesh, can you tell me what will be the first memory which will be created in this? Pool will be created. Uh, sorry? A static pool. Superb, correct. The first memory which will be created will be my static pool. So what are the members will get loaded into the static pool? So it will load uh, K. Yes, static in K is equal to 14. Then? And then it will load uh, main, public. Yeah. My main function. So main function as of now, I'll just copy here. Because I, instead of typing, I'm just copying it there. That's it. My main function. Apart from that, do we have any static members? Uh, no. That's it. These two only. So now what will happen? So uh, next, um, a public pool will be created for the main memory. Sorry, main function. Correct. A local memory for the main will be created. So from where actually what this main memory is created means? From the static pool. Okay. Superb. Then next actually what are the members will be low? Sorry. Uh, then uh, main function start to execute. Here integer i is equal to 10. J equal to yeah, so what will happen? So it will create a memory for that. Yeah. I and J. Yes. These two are local or global? They are local. Correct. They are local for the main function. Main function. Yes. Correct. Then now? Then the, uh, then the, prayer, like when the system, the, I mean the CISO statement will be printed. Correct. Local variable. Uh, function. Yes. Then? plus i so adding actually what any information with the string will be concatenated concatenated means joining two words or two informations so i so when i refer only by the variable name so where the search will go now we will go to the main uh, memory yes do we have i here yes yes the value is 10. 10 then again a space then plus j goes to the yeah. main memory again so it will take the value 20 20 yes awesome good one so now next actually what so the next is uh, global variable k yes global so variable. static pool yes now there is actually what here again plus k only the variable name only the variable yes so where the search will go now only if it is very static uh, directly it goes to static or is there any other route it will go? Um, uh, from main it will go to static pool. Correct. Always when we refer by the variable name, search goes to the local memory. So here main is my local memory now. Do we have a key variable here? No, we don't have. So where this main memory is created? From the static pool. 
Right. Now it goes to the static mode. Do we have a k variable here? Yes. Yes. That is 40. 40 will be created. Then next system dot out dot print ln global variable dot k that is referring with the help of my class name. Class name. So now if I refer a variable with the help of a class name, what will happen now? So um, there will be another uh, memory allocation for the class. Uh, no, no. Whenever we refer with a variable with the help of a class name, I will go to static pool. Okay. Yeah, it will go to the static pool again. Yes. Yes. Search with the help of a uh, name of my class. Always it will go to my static pool. So yes. then here the value of k will be 40. Okay. That's it. Clear? Yes. Super. Hey, good man. Thanks, Akesh. Uh, now, hey, hi, Tejesh. Uh, hey, hi, Tejesh. You're there. Hello. Hello. Uh, this I'm not able to hear you. Okay. Uh, hey, hi, Shweta. Uh, Shweta, you are there. Uh, Shweta. Hello. Okay. So now let me execute. So right now, global local variable obj equal to new global local variable. So I'm creating a keyword a new memory, new global local variable. So now an object will be created for me here. So the object name will be, it's obj. obj is my object name. Now what will happen? So global local variable is my reference. So that means load all the global members from the global local variable class might be static or it might be non-static both the things so now static members it will have a single copy i told so it takes from the static pool only static int k then my main function then after that do we have any non-static members here yes that is 50 that gets loaded here okay so now next so it's loaded the object with all the global members might be static or non-static has been loaded. Okay. Cool. There is no worries. No worries. So now next system dot out dot print line obj dot p. So one more thing. So where this object gets created means created from this main. Okay. So then after that system dot out dot print line obj dot p. So now goes to the obj. What is my p value? 50. That 50 gets printed for me here. Then next obj dot k. So comes to the obj. What is my k value right now? 40. 40 gets printed. Then after that, okay. System dot out dot print and global local variable. Then after that, global local variable dot k. Okay, goes to the static pool. What is my k value? 40. So whenever we refer with the help of a class name, search goes to the static pool and then prints the information. That is 40. Hey, sorry. Uh, hey, sorry, guys. I just missed something. Sorry, sorry. Hey, guys. Sorry. I just missed something. So once we create the object, okay. So where we are right now? obj dot p obj dot k. Okay, so yeah, I think the next one obj yes, dot p sixty. Yes, correct. So obj dot p is equal to sixty. So now it goes to the obj. What is my p value right now? It is fifty. So now that will be replaced with sixty now. Yes. Good one. That will be replaced with 60. Then next obj dot k equal to 90. So it goes to the obj and then it changes the value of k to 90. So the 40 value will be replaced with 
90 right now. So k is what type of variable? Is a static variable. So I told you static members as a single copy alone. Whenever it changes there, the change will apply everywhere. So here also the value will be changed from 40 to 90. Understood? Okay, static pool alone will have a single copy. So a change is applied anywhere that will be applied everywhere. Next, we have done till year. Okay, so next we are creating an object. Uh, now, uh, hey, hi Rakesh, can you help me now? Uh, what will happen now for this step? OBJ1. Yeah, so this will create another uh, for OBJ1. Yes, yes, another object OBJ. Another object OBJ1. Yes, so now what will happen? So all the global it, members. it will load all the all the variables. Yes, all the members <laughs> might be all variables the or function. Yes. Yes. Now next, what will happen? So, so here it will uh, static uh, in k equal to ninety. Correct. Static members always it will take from the static pool only. So the current value of k is what ninety. 90. So that ninety will be taken. Then my main function. Then, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yes. Then after that, the p also will be loaded, right? Correct. My non-static member also gets loaded, but non-static member always it will take from the old instance only. Okay. Because okay. non-static members will have multiple memories. Static members will have a single memory alone. Okay. Right, right? Yeah. Next. So now we have created the object. Now next, what will happen? Sure, sure. Uh, just a minute, guys. I'll just repeat that this part alone. So, because this is important, just give me a minute. So now, I am trying to create an object. So, I am trying to create an object here. OBJ one, correct? New global local variable. So now, what will happen? It creates me one object here. So the object name is obj1 year. Okay, obj1 is my object name. So from where that gets created? From my main function. Then, now, once we create the object, it loads all the global members, might be static or non-static. It might be a function or it might be a variable. So I already told you static members will have a single copy. Always static members copy will be taken from the static pool only. So it takes from there. Static in k equal to my value is 90. It's 90. Then next my main function. Okay. Then after that it loads all the non-static members. So non-static members always it takes actually what? The previous old instance only. So because non-static members will have multiple copies, but static members will have a single copy alone. That's what here. Understood? Clear race? Anyone has any questions on this? Uh, now it's clear, Shweta. For Tejesh, everyone is clear. Can you just ping me as yes if you understood it? Super awesome. So now next year. So we have created the OBJ one. Now printing it. So hey, hi Shweta. Uh, hello, hey, hi Shweta. Now you like to try to execute this? Uh, I'll give it a try. Uh, sorry? Yeah, I'll give it a try. Yeah, yeah, just, just give it a try. Anyway, you anyway, I'm there actually for to help. Yes, system dot out dot print and obj one dot p. Anything comes in double quotes will be printed as it is. Now, obj one dot p. That means what will be printed and where the search will go? It will first go to the main. Yeah, no, referring with the help of my object name. Oh, right? So here, do we have any object name with obj one? 
Yeah, that's it. So here p value will be what? Okay, it's 50. 50, yes, correct. Then next obj1 dot k. So it goes to the obj1. Then what is now what will happen? Obj1 k value is what? 90. 90, yes, correct. Then next thing is printing global local variable. Anything comes in double quotes will be printed as it is. So that's what we are doing here. Then next section what? Global local variable dot k. That is referring the k variable with the help of my class name. So whenever I refer with the help of my class name, where the search will go? Any idea? Yes, correct. So now in the static pool, what is the value we have for k? 90. 90. Correct. So 90. So now global local variable dot k is equal to 20. That is, I am trying to do reinitialization now. So what is when I refer with the help of my class name, where the search will go now? So always when we refer, ah, sorry, tell me. It still goes to the static pool and then it changes the value there. Superb, yes. So it changes the value from 90 to 20. So now the value has been changed to 20. And I told you static members will have a single copy. So Good, whenever yeah. it changes, changes applied, it applies everywhere. So where all the places actually what the change will apply now? There, then then OBJ1 Correct. And object, yeah. Yes. In both the places, now the value will be also changed to 20. Because static members has only one copy alone. That's why. Okay. Yes. Now, again, obj1.k equal to 70. Now, what will happen? Now, we'll be referring with the help of my object name. Do I have any object called obj1? Yeah. Yes. So, the value is replaced with 20. So, that gets again over it by 70. Yes, correct. Now, it will be 70. Now, when we are changing the k variable here in object level, can will it also change everywhere? Because static members will have a single copy. Will it change everywhere? Yes. Yes. It changes everywhere now. Because static members, wherever you change, that will be replacing everywhere. That's what we are doing here. Clear, right? Yes. Yeah. Super. Then next. So we have changed. So now obj one dot p is equal to twenty five. Now what will happen? Obj one dot two. Oh, so that is there is fifty there. Correct. It's replaced twenty five. It replaced with twenty five. So will it get replaced anywhere? It's a non-static member. Will it get replaced yes. anywhere? No, it doesn't get replaced. Yes, because only static members has single copy. Non-static members will have multiple copies. The change will apply only in that place alone. Okay, super. A good shvita. Now, I'm trying to create an another object called obj2. Okay, so now it gets create me a new object which is obj2. So now what will happen? So now what will happen when we create a new object? Variables. Correct. All the global members will get loaded. So static members, what will happen? Always it should take from the static pool only. Because static members has a single copy. So that's why it always takes the information from the static pool. So here it is 17. Then my main function then we don't have any static members. Do we have any non-static members? We have any non-static members? P. Yes. What is what does the value will be gets loaded? Uh, is it 25 or 50? Uh, no. It takes from the always from the old instance only in P is equal to 50. Got it right? 
So it does not take okay. any information from this active information. It takes from the uh, from the, the old. Yeah. Yes. So now, okay. Let me just copy these things and keep here so that it will be easy for you to understand. So now I'll just keep these things here. Now you can. So now global local variable dot k. Now we are referring with the help of my class name. Okay. So now when we refer with the help of a class name, where the search will go? The static pool. Yes, superb. Now what is the k value here? 70. 70. Yes. Superb. A good. Next, obj dot p. So what is my p value from the obj to? 50. 50. Yes. Then after that actually what? obj2 dot k. So next obj2 k value? 70. 70. Yes. Then next thing is obj dot p. What is my obj p value? So we have three objects, right? Here we have any object called obj. The first one, right? That's yeah. what we are referring to. Correct. Yeah, 60. 60. Next after that, obj one dot p. The it's value 25. of 25. That's it. Clear, right? So in this program, we mainly saw that is whenever I create an any objects over the static pool level, what is the current value of uh, current value of my static member? We took it. Non-static members always we took it from the old instance only. Got it, right? So now once the entire program is executed, now what will happen right now for me? So for me, we come out of the main function. Once we come out of the main function, the main memory will get deleted. So from the main memory only, these objects gets created, right? So all these memory gets deleted. Then comes out of the entire program, static pool, and then the entire memory gets deleted for me here. Understood, please? Everyone is clear on this? Anyone has any questions on this so far? Same thing now if we execute this program, we will get the same output. Whatever we executed with the same output, we will get here. See. We will get the same output here. Okay. So this is about variables and then the memory allocation part. Okay. Cool. Hope so. Everyone is clear on this part. Okay. Super. So now next actually what we will go with actually what functions. So before going to function as you should, we will have a five minutes break. Then I will continue for you so that it will be easy for you to understand. Okay. We will have a five minutes break. Then we will start this. Okay. So 735 we will again connect. Thank you.
Hello. Yes. So can we start the session? Can you just all ping me as yes if you're okay. if you're available? Can we start the session? Good. Okay, thanks guys. So we'll start the session. So now we are going to start with functions. Okay, so let me create actually what one class print with this. Then click package my main function finish. So now why we need functions we have to see. So first actually what as of now I will print for me Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then Sunday. I'm having. So I want to print it for a number of times here. So I have actually what printed these seven line of statements for one, two, three, four, five, six times. Okay. So six times I have printed this. So think over if it is actually what a 200 lines of code, which has been repeated for 10 times. That means totally 2000 lines of code. I'm going to write unnecessarily. Okay. So how to avoid that? Because my intention is actually what whenever we have actually what more lines of code, so the performance will be decreased a little bit. Okay, so I want to make it actually what in a good performance level. So how to do that means okay. So if we have actually what the same information which has been repeated n number of times, it's better for me to keep it in a function and then call that function whenever we need to execute that set of lines. That's a best practice. So advantage is what means in case if there is a change. So I'm going to give it as actually what year there is a change. I need to make it as wet day. So now what happened? I need to identify in all the places wherever I have utilized. Then I need to change it over there as actually what the wet day. So right now everything is there in the same file. We change it in case if it's there in different different file identifying it and then after that giving it is actually what becomes a hectic task. We might also make some mistakes. So that's why if it is we have it in a function level, it is safer for us. One change will get applied everywhere. Okay, so now I'll execute this program. Right click run as Java application. See everywhere it's wet day. Okay, so now the same thing. I will just copy this code. So how I can make it as a function. So I will write it as functions usage. I'll make it as package. Then I'll have a main function. So here, what I will do, I will create a function. So how to create a function? So simple. So always a function will have a return type that is void. Then I will give a name for it as weekdays. Any name I can give. Always function should be followed with open and then close parentheses. Then I will open my braces, then close it. Here I will have system dot out print and Monday to Sunday. Okay, we have it here. So these are the seven lines that has been repeated in number of times. Correct, right? So always a my function will have a return type. 
return. So void means I cannot return any value. I can have a return statement alone. Okay, I cannot return any value, but I can have a return statement alone. That's what here. Okay, so now we have this. Then here, I want to actually what do the same concept. See here, I will copy the same line. So I will paste it. So which are the places actually what we need to actually what call the function is here. Okay, so this one, I want to call this function. So I will delete it. So what type of function it is? It's a non-static. So that means non-static means I need to create an object. OBJ is equal to new function usage. Then next, I need to call this function means so simple. OBJ dot. So object OBJ is my object name. Then here, if you see down, we have a method called weekdays. Okay, void. So I'll call this. The same step I will repeat in all the places, which wherever it's needed. So all the places I'm going to replace like this. We have replaced like this. Now again, if I execute it, right click, run as Java application. Can you see? I can expect the same output. Now in case if there is a change, run as day. See, here I'm going to change it. Only one place I change, but if you see, everywhere the same information gets reflected for me. Okay, that is utilization of my coding is easy. And propering a following a standard practice Okay, it's so much comfortable for me to use a functions. Whenever there is actually what some set of statements which need to be repeated n number of times, it's better for me always to use a function. Clear? Any questions on why we need to use a function and then how to write a basic function? Anyone, everyone is clear, guys? Can everyone ping me? As yes, if you have understood it, how to write a basic function and then how to utilize it. Hope so everyone is clear on this part. Okay, so now we'll see about the return type. So we have clear about actually what the functions. Now we'll see actually what learn about return types. Functions. Return types. Okay, main function. Thank you. So, how to write a function? It's so simple. Just always function should have a return type. Why? Then I will have my method name as m1. Then with parentheses, always the method name should come. Then open and close the parentheses. Correct. Then I will have sizzle. I will print M1. That's it. So, always non static methods we will be creating with the help of an object and then utilize it. Correct. Then we will call it as obj.m1. So, here first I will have CISO program starts. Same thing in the bottom I will have. Program ends. So obj.m1 will help me to call that method. See, right click, run as Java application. Prints me m1. So void means it is not mandatory for me to use a return statement because void anyway can, if I have it as a return statement, anyway it cannot return any value here. Correct? It cannot return any value, but it can have a return statement here. Okay, so now the thing is, okay, I, if I have instead of void a different return type, see what happens. If I have instead of void is integer, see now it's throwing me an error. Because when we have apart from void, 
we have to return the value so it's an integer is the return type that means i need to return an integer value same thing in case if it is a string i should return a string value if it is actually what a boolean i need to return a boolean value that is we have learned about data types and variables right so that is based on my data type reference the variable values can be stored same thing return types also based on my actually what return types actually what the value should be written according to that so boolean is my return type so boolean value so if it is integer i should pass an integer value that's how okay we are returning but are we utilizing it now no we are not utilizing it as of now see still it prints program starts when i call this method it goes to this method prints m1 then returns me 10 that 10 comes over here but we are not utilizing it then after the program ends so in case if i have it over there system dot out dot print and here i will have it so now what will happen obj dot m1 now this will go and call me this m1 method prints m1 returns me 10 that 10 comes over here that will be printed for me here right click run as job application see 10 will be printed understood guys any questions on this you're clear same thing in case i can also capture it in a variable integer a is equal to obj dot m1 obj dot m1 okay so then i will print this so a right click run as job application see here it prints actually what obj dot m1 calls the method and then prints m1 here then after that actually what the return 10 that comes over here that value will be printed here then integer a is equal to obj dot m1 so now what will happen right now so goes to the m1 method prints me m1 here then after that actually what it returns me 10 that 10 comes over here that 10 will be actually what stored here okay now i'm printing actually what a that prints me 10 the value which has been stored then finally program ends understood everyone is clear on this part guys understood right how to use a function and then what is return types everyone is clear can everyone ping me in the chat window? yes if you're clear about how to write a function and then how to use functions with return type clear right super great so next thing functions with functions overloading okay so functions overloading or method overloading we will be calling okay the, always everyone will be calling this method overloading how to use this we'll see Okay. Just give me a minute, please. I'll just come. Give me a minute. A minute, I'll just come.
hello hey guys sorry we'll start the session so now we are going to talk about method overloading so what is this method overloading means so simple i have a method called void m1 okay so m1 is going to print so think over like this if i have a variable called integer a is equal to 10 so can i have an another variable again here as integer a is equal to 20 is it possible no because they have already created a variable name called a local variable here called a again i cannot create an another local variable as actually what a is equal to actually what 20 because that becomes as a duplicate or a conflict will be appear because if i try to call sizo a it will not the system will not know whether to call which a variable whether this 20 or whether this 10 okay so creation of actually what again a new variable in the same memory location is not possible same applies for the methods also can i create an another method as m1 here is it possible no that is it becomes as a duplicate okay so for me right now my functionality is same the process alone there is a small change okay so how to do that okay so for example i if you think over in the selenium level so for example i want to create a customer okay normal okay i want to create a customer so next section what while creating the customer i want to do an extra process over there that is actually what in case if i get a project i will create the project name for the customer also i will create a task for the created customer so like that creation of customer is my functionality but the process level actually what one i might get a task or i might get a project or whatever it is so then after that based on this actually what the creation will happen but the functionality remains same so for those things what we will do means we will differentiate them with help of actually what the arguments so here if i give integer a so now what will happen so right now actually what for me here this methods are being differentiated methods can be differentiated based on the type of argument otherwise based on the number of arguments okay based on the type of arguments otherwise based on the number of arguments here okay that's all so if we don't have a method with an argument that will be called as a default method okay when we have actually what a method with an argument that is called as a integer argument method this is double argument method and here we have integer and double argument method okay so here So here it's actually what plus e. So these various arguments will be like a local variable for this my method here m1. These will be like my local variables for my method. Uh, yes, Rakesh. Uh, the, uh, no, that is actually what based on the return types we cannot differentiate a method. Okay, only based on the arguments we can differentiate a method so for example right now i have a method here called again void m1 which does not have any argument it's throwing me error so now instead of void i'm making it as an integer then i'm printing sizo return here i'm passing 10 Still, actually, what here the error is gone, but here the error still says duplicate method. Okay, see, it still says duplicate method over there. That's the thing. Here, 
any questions for anyone on this okay so only based on the arguments actually what we can differentiate a method that is it can be based on the number of arguments otherwise actually what the type of arguments over there that's how it can be differentiated so the arguments which we all we are having here those will be my actually what local variables for this method see plus e here again it's being plus e here plus e plus b e and then b. that's what we have clear now let me run this see right click run as java application so we are not executing anything because we are not calling the method so now let me create the object opg is equal to new method overloading now if i want to call opg dot m1 so see here right now the return types for all the methods are actually what void then these methods actually what you see m1 double integer a integer a double. these are the arguments so now i'm calling the methods one by one opj dot m1 integer a here i should pass an integer value if i want to call this method i want to pass an integer value same thing obj dot m1 double a 20.30 obj dot m1 here i am passing integer and double so here i'll pass 50 comma 30.35 for example yeah. so here i'll have scissor program starts This one will be program ends. Right click, run as Java application. See, so here, yeah. So, see, whenever I print a, the local variable value actually what it is a for it, so 10 will be printed. So, here double a that is 20.30 integer a and will be here. So we are passing actually about 50 and 30.35. So that comes here. Okay, clear. So first program starts and then we are creating the object, calling the method one by one. And finally, program ends. That is based on arguments when we actually what based on the number of arguments or based on the type of arguments when we separate a method that will be actually what called as method overloading. Okay, when we differentiate a method based on arguments, we will be calling it as a method overloading. And should anyone ask any questions on this so far, guys? Everyone is clear, right? Can everyone ping me in the chat window? Yes, if you have understood this part. Super. Shweta, you also understood? Super. Great, guys. So that's about actually what this functions variables and functions okay so if you have any questions please let me know anytime okay i will be helping you so from tomorrow onwards the session will be our usual time morning 7 30 to 8 30 it will be our regular time okay uh, hey hi tejesh uh, tejesh can you just uh, send me your email id alone so that i will forward the uh, details to you today today's session uh, just forward me your email in the give me the chat window so that actually what uh, i will just send the video to you today from tomorrow onwards you will also get the meeting invite. the meeting invite will be same so today you have joined it the same meeting invite okay any questions for anyone so i'll also forward actually what the account details so if you are uh, interested and then if you want to continue over there you can just transfer the money to my account over there so that you can go forward. Okay, yeah, thank you. Got your mail ID. Okay, yes, thank you.
So meet you tomorrow, 7.30, the same meeting ID. Thank you. Bye, guys.